Let's look at this for a minute, though. Y'all can see how low this water is. Look down through yonder. You can see that that water is probably, I'm going to say, three feet, probably three feet low, lower than what it should be. But right now, we're getting into fall, and with fall comes a lot of rain in the Tennessee Valley. That's probably about... 18 inches deep right there. That's a little bitty strike indicator. It's about the size of a butter bean. And uh, it don't take much of a strike. I mean, they can't feel the resistance at all. But marabou, yeah, I trimmed that bait up a lot. I probably caught, cut about five-eighths of an inch off of it, but y'all don't see how that looks in the water if y'all can see that. I don't know if you can. Very realistic. They could think it's anything. I bought it at Cabela's. It's called the Pro Light Jig. One one hundredth of an ounce. Marabou. Marabou jig. Y'all can see that very, very tiny, lightweight jig. But um, they come a little bit too bushy. So what I had to do was trim it up just a little bit. And I did that uh, with some scissors. Of course, this one is wet. But y'all can see how tiny that is. I mean, look at the wind blowing it. One one hundredth of an ounce. Now, the hook size, I'm going to say, is probably, that's probably a size 10 hook that's in it. And um, I have, I'm using two pound test, high vis, vicious line, two pound test. That's a Palomar knot that I have tied. And that's just a strike indicator that I have up on my line. Um, real simple, simple deal that I'm doing right here. And the reason why I'm using a strike indicator is because bluegill are just like crappie they're a very hardy fish but anytime the water temperature falls abruptly it kind of shocks the fish so that's the reason why i'm using the strike indicator to keep that jig in front of those bluegills face longer just like i would a crappie now i'm using a six and a half foot sow belly rod, ultralight rod, never as any dish rag you ever washed a dish with. A 1,000 size Daiwa reel, and that's it. You have to really keep your eye on that floater. When it goes down, it'll go down quick, and if you don't really watch that floater, you'll lose contact with it. It's so small, but all I'm doing is fishing for these bluegill like I would a crappie. I'm just pulling it, letting it sit there. Pulling it, letting it sit there. Now that's a little bitty strike indicator, so this one one hundredth of an ounce jig head, that is small, folks. That is, I mean, light is not even capable of pulling that little bitty float down it just ain't there's no weight there whatsoever so you can really finesse a bite out with a presentation that's this light and this small i mean no matter how these fish will get shocked a little bit when the water falls temperature falls that quick abruptly like that but the fact of the matter is, if you hold a jig in front of their face long enough, they can be caught. Bluegill can be caught just like crappie. Patience has got to be one of the most important things that a person needs to have. But look, I'm just shaking it, just moving the jig four, five, six inches at the most. And letting it sit there, and there's a bite. Y'all seen that, didn't you? This is a big one right here. This is one of those old big ones I've been talking about. Or I think it is. Yeah, it is. That fish is fighting. It's all a matter of keeping that off from right in front of their face. These are not the best of conditions to fish. 
right now at all. I'm telling you, they're not. Looky there, what a bluegill. Now that is a big, big gill right there. Now folks, I want you to look. That is a is a big one for this. One. Look at that little bitty offering in his mouth. Little tiny jig. I knew them would be good uh, under the right conditions, and these are the perfect conditions for this kind of fishing right here. Perfect. That is a big son of a gun. Look at that. That should be in the field and stream magazine right there. Big old bluegill. And he's cold as a piece of ice. They ain't nothing like the sport of fishing. Let's let him go. Alright folks. I can't get too much lower in the water. There he goes. Ah, that was the best release I could do right there. Because if I get any lower, I'll mar up. This water is incredibly, incredibly low. But I'm going to go back over here where we caught that fish. Now, the advantage of this little bitty strike indicator that I have is if, if I can fish with one, if, I'm, if I can fish with a jig that's light enough to where it won't pull it under, I'll use these little strike indicators. Because the fact of the matter is, when they obligate to a bite, uh, to a bait, when they hit it, they can't feel any resistance from above. And they'll actually hold on to that jig much longer if they don't feel that resistance. Thus, increasing your odds on catching that fish. There he is. I put it right on his head. I mean, I put it right on that fish's head. This is a good one. Look at the bowls right there. Oh, my goodness. This is a mule. This is a mule. Mule. Of a fish. Golly. I'm scared that. Golly, it bent that rod double. Flipping him in like that. And I barely, barely got him, but that's good enough. Barely is always good enough. Look at there how tall that fish is. Let's let him go. Go on back. Thank you. But yeah, look at that little indicator. Right? It's about like a butter bean, folks. I mean, they can't even feel that. It's, it's zero resistance. That little float's so small, I know y'all can't see it go down. But when one hits it, it just boom, sinks out of sight. Just, just like a crappie. And that's how they're hitting it. They're just hitting it and just going with it slow they're not moving all fast at all and generally speaking the warmer the water the harder they they pull bluegill is no doubt a warm weather species they prefer warm warm weather warm water temps i mean but golly there's some big ones in here. There's some bigger than what we're even catching. Sometimes I just let the wind, there's a fish, work for me. Just like that right there, there's a good one. Another good one. Like I was saying, I just let the wind work for me that time and blow that little float. Wow. That's a good one right here. Just move that float along real slow. Come on in here. Golly. Y'all look at this. And that ain't nothing but a 
big old bluegill right there. I mean, a big one. And that marabou jig is holding out, too. That's the smallest marabou jig that I know, that I've ever seen, folks. One one hundredth of an ounce. All right, let's let him go. Go on back, you big pretty thing. There he is. Golly. That's a good one. My, 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 folks. And my again. I know that was a good one when I set the hook into that one. Wow, this is a good fish right here. Wow. We -e -e. This is amazing. Little bitty marabou jig is absolutely catching these fish when they don't want to bite. Look here what a big old, this is a good one right here. Golly. Oh, that's too much to lift up with two pound line. Look here. Y'all look at that. That is a big son of a gun. Let's let him go. I know he was. See how he's barely, barely skint. We all seen that. Barely hooked. They're not wanting this jig, but now that's the kind of stuff that I'll do to go ahead and catch fish when others says, oh, I forget about it today. They ain't biting, Richard. Fish can be caught just about any time, any time, folks. If you go about it right, crappie are just like bluegill these bigger bluegill or bullgill they'll feed on some of the tiniest tiniest things meaning nymphs and, and things of that nature of course this this marabou jig could be mistaken for a nymph it it could which means a bug an emergent bug you know that it could be oh my goodness um a little bitty tiny bluegill you know it could be uh, any type of little minner the way that marabou looks in the water there's another something going on out there but I don't know if that's a fish or not a lot of methane gas escaping right now from the bottom the water temperature is really changing now, as far as I de the, the depth here on the, this pond right here is not deep at all, folks. I doubt if it's five, five or six feet right in the middle of this, this pond right here. And I'm probably fishing just, oh, I don't know, a foot off of the bottom at, at 16 to 18 inches deep. Um... I mean, it's a real shallow pond. And there he is. Golly. See, I figured out how to catch him. I ain't no doubt I've got these fish figured out. And that's what fishing is about. Figuring out what to do. That's a big and look at there what a healthy fish. My, 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 my. And I handle these gently too because I tell you folks, if you're not going to eat them, they ain't no need in hurting them. Because it takes them a long time to get that size. Bluegill is not a big fish anyway. It takes them a while to reach that size. There's another one. It is full of them right there. This is a big one, too. My goodness. I'm like, the next time I go to Cabela's, I'm not kidding, folks. And, uh, or Bass Pro Shop. Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, same thing. 
I am going to load up on these little tiny marabou jigs because I can see right now there's a lot of situations that these would be killer, not just for these big old giant bluegill, but for crop it. God, that one's so big, I can't even reach around him. Let's let him go. Come on back. You can make a bad day, an old terrible weather day, into a good one. if you'll just get on out here and fish figure out what's going on and have a ball doing it folks there's nothing like it well folks let's check the rig out one more time i tell you what i caught a lot more fish than what i thought i would we didn't show them all but i caught a bunch of big bluegill two pound test mono little bitty strike indicator y'all see how small that is and the smallest marabou jig that I've ever seen in my life uh, uh, smallest jig head I've ever seen one one hundredth of an ounce that's little that's real small and of course ultralight tackle wimpy 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 rod I tell you that's a lot of fun once again, I'm going to say thank y'all very much for all y'all have done. It's been a phenomenal year this year. It's, it's been, and it's went real quick, really. But, but as far as the fishing, we've accomplished a lot, and we're going to keep on rolling. There's no doubt about it. But this year has been a very good one, and I thank y'all very much for supporting the channel by watching Richard Jean the Fishing Machine. Y'all have been a godsend, and I, I've said that several several times. Love each and every one of y'all. And God bless each and every one of y'all. Oh, hey, well, even when it's cold, windy, oh, it don't matter. A drillaging is something that I can't help! Woo! Hey man, woo. And remember, go fishing when you can, but call this good for you.